greetings in the name of Yeshua. So let me get right into it. Um, last night, last night, and again, always, as always, just if somebody could uh, let me know uh, that you can hear me. Last night, um, I'm just going to give you my, my personal testimony, uh, not my testimony, but of what happened last night. Um, I was in bed, went to bed, I think around five minutes before 11. At midnight, I was sound asleep, and my wife walked in the room and told me that Iran had launched, uh, I, I think the number she used was 100 drones. Uh, that was on the news, and uh, so I got up out of bed. Uh, I came here, right here, to my uh, office, and um, and really didn't know what to do. I, I shared that with you guys in a video. So here's what happened over the next little while. Um, it wasn't 100 drones. It was, let me give you the exact numbers, um, because it's unprecedented. And let me, while I'm looking for these numbers, let me just ask you something. What, what do you think your government should do if um, 300 projectiles, missiles, drones were shot at your country? What do you think America would do? What do you think Great Britain would do? What do you think France would do? What do you think Russia would do? Who's calling for restraint? By the way, that was one of the first things I read this morning, is that Russia, Putin of all people, calling for restraint. But I'm not going to get into that right now. So... 170 drones, not 100, 170 drones, 120 ballistic missiles, and 30 cruise missiles. So 300 in all that were uh, shot towards Israel. So just a little bit of a background, about a week or so ago, a little bit more than that. Uh, Israel uh, made a targeted strike, not on the Iranian embassy, which is being spread, that's not true. Not on the Iranian consulate, it was on a building nearby. Now, why that building? Because inside were seven terrorists. They all work for the um, uh, Republican guards of Iran, and two of them were generals. And these are people that were coordinating the attacks that we're dealing with, I'm assuming primarily with Hezbollah, uh, Syria uh, typically is it's in between Iran and um, Lebanon, where Hezbollah is. And so as part of this war that we did not start, uh, we made a targeted attack against those seven uh, Iranian military folks. They were all killed. Nobody else was. There was zero collateral damage. And Iran said, because the consulate is, even though it wasn't the consulate, is their, um, uh, you know, it's like an embassy. It's, it's their, it's Iran, it, even though it was inside of Syria, inside of Damascus. Um, Iran said, you know, well, that's like attacking us. So we're going to, we're going to attack you back. And so how did they attack us back? By sending 300 drones and missiles at Israel, Three. Hundred. Now, let me explain how this works. The drones are very slow, and they take about uh, several hours. In fact, when, when Ilana woke me up, she said, you know, it would still be two or three hours before the drones arrived. So Israelis all over the country were up at midnight, 11, 1, waiting for these drones, uh, sheltering in place. And there, you know, many of us have safe rooms. Many don't have safe rooms. If they're apartment buildings, they go to the stairwell. Um, many people just don't bother because they're sleeping and they're tired. Um, and, uh, so the drones are very slow. Then you've got these cruise missiles that I think take about an hour, uh, to get here. And then we got word that, that they were going to be launched. And then there's the ballistic mi missiles that only take about 12 minutes. So, uh, you know, Again, that's nothing like the rockets that we've dealt with here in Israel, which, which here in Ashkelon is about 25 seconds. In, in Tel Aviv, it's a minute. In Sderot, I think it's 15 seconds, seven kilometers from Gaza. So 12 minutes is like an eternity. So what did we do? Well, first, I'll just tell you what, what, what you know, I went through. Um, so I'm sitting here. Uh, we made a video, and I'm checking the news. I can't go back to sleep um, in, until this is over. And then suddenly my phone, I don't know where my phone is, but my phone just goes 
nuts. I was going to say ballistic, but I won't say that. <laughs> my, my phone just went nuts I, I, it, it be, because we have a uh, alert on the phone. So when an incoming rocket from Hamas comes in, we know. So Or from Hezbollah. And I've never seen so many. It was a over 100, and it felt like about one minute. It was a bzz, 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 it just kept, they just kept coming through. And, um, and I'm watching it go from, you know, 39, 41, uh, 45, and finally, you know, 90, 93, 95, 100. Now, at the time, because Ilana had told me that it was going to be a few hours, I didn't think it was the drones. Uh, they were still, you know, we were still waiting for another at least hour. So I thought, well, maybe Hamas has been saving up for this time. And these are Hamas, Hamas rockets that are, and I'm just going to check the screen here, make sure that everybody can hear me. Um, so if uh, anybody, yes, okay, you can hear. Good, praise the Lord. Um, so I didn't think it was Iran because I didn't know about the ballistic missiles. So basically, this is what happened. Uh, and, and I went outside on my balcony and you say, Ron, are, are you nuts? Why would you do that? Because uh, we have a early warning system here and I would always get a, a warning. Certainly with these rockets, probably, I don't know. I know with, with Hamas, it's 25 seconds, but with these, not rockets, but missiles, ballistic missiles, probably, you know, several minutes warning to go into our safe room. So I felt very confident and um, I went outside on the balcony and it was incredible. I mean, I've, I'm used to seeing the Iron Dome over Ashdod, which is one, one city north of here. Um, but this was different. I was seeing our missiles going up, the Arrow 2 and the Arrow 3 going up. And then I was seeing other things. Like Normally, I don't see things go down. Of course, we're normally dealing with crude rockets that don't, you know, once they blow up, that's it. But these are massive ballistic missiles. So when they fell down, they're still on fire. So I was a little confused why Hamas rockets were, you know, why, and I'm thinking, I hope they're not making an impact. So here's what I've learned throughout the day. So the drones, and let me just say thank you to God Almighty. You know, somebody... Um, sent me the verse, um, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, uh, like 10 minutes ago. And then I went to my email like 10 seconds later and somebody sent me a video with that same verse. And, and this guy made the video before the attack and just felt like he, that the Lord had spoken that verse to him and that we would not be harmed. So I want to give glory to God. I want to thank America my other country. I want to thank France. I want to thank the UK. I want to thank Jordan. You know, Jordan pretends to be like angry at Israel, but that I, I truly believe a lot of that, if not all of it is for show for the people of Jordan, many of whom hate us, but the government of Jordan, the King of Jordan, they, they understand that they're dealing with Islamic psychos. And they also understand Israel's, you know, that we have an existential threat um, in, uh, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that, but those are, um, jackals. I have, <laughs> there's a field, uh, like a protected area, um, outside our, like a reserve, uh, outside our on the other side of our home. And this time of night, as the sun is coming down, the jackals come out and, arr, and it's, it is, I have to tell you, they do it for about five minutes and then they stop. There's gotta be a hundred of them and you can't see them because they, they're nocturnal. So they only come out at night and they're in the field. The other day I was walking, talking on the phone to somebody and they started doing that. And I just went in and suddenly I saw these six eyes looking at me. And so it's very, very cool. And they do it every night. You know, it's part of God's awesome creation. And speaking about God, he protected us. 300 missiles or drones or missiles, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles. 399%. That would mean that three got through. 297 were neutralized. And three got through. 
Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I, I thank you, Lord God, that we're, we're not a perfect country. We got a lot of problems in this country, but God, you, you will not let our enemies win. You will not let our enemies gloat because your reputation is at stake. You are the God of Israel. And I thank you. I thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, that you protected us last night. So just if you're watching wherever you are, just give God praise. Don't forget to thank God. And again, America, France, UK, and Jordan, who, again, I was saying that they pretend to be, they for show, I think they make a lot of noise about us, but they know that we're sane people and that a lot of the people in their own country are nuts. Uh, and when I say nuts, I mean religiously nuts. They're not, they're not um, people that would be uh, classified as clinically uh, unstable but there are people that have embraced a form of Islam or true Islam that calls for the destruction of Israel. And so there was lots of excitement in Iran last night as all these missiles are coming. And, and they, of course, they have these staged, you know, you know, events where people come out and they rejoice. The vast majority of Iranians are against their own government. Wherever I go and meet Iranians, they love Israel. I was just, I was just in Germany ministering last week and an Iranian... Uh, fellow said something because I made mention about Iran and at the end of my, my message he spoke out in German and and he basically was saying was saying what I already knew but he didn't know that I knew that um, and I, I should have made it clear in my message but that hey we the people of Iran we don't like our government we don't like what they're doing we we love Israel we want normalcy and so you you know we pray for revolution in Iran uh, but let's get back to what happened. So the drones are very slow for, you know, planes. And so between all four of those countries plus Israel, we we took out all 170 drones before even one of them got to Israel. Uh, the hundred and how many cruise missiles? 30, I think it was. Let me just go back and look at my notes. Those were also taken out. The cruise missiles were... Um, were also taken out before they ever, yeah, 30, before they ever got to Israel. So what did I see? I saw those 12 minute, 12 minutes from Iran to Israel, ballistic missiles. So 120 of them were, uh, came into Israel or many of them made it into Israel, but we have something called the arrow two or maybe even the arrow three. They cause cost millions of dollars, each one of them, but they worked and what they do, if you go the, if you Google it, you need to see what the impact is like because is like because it does not n like the Iron Dome impacts. I can see it right in, in my my bare eyes, but the uh, Arrow Three or Arrow Two. I'm not sure which one it was. You know what? Let me look here real quick. Um, I think it's on this page. Arrow System. It says Arrow System. Um, just one second. The Arrow 3. The Arrow, the Arrow 3 system is designed to take out ballistic missiles while they, are, while they are still outside of the atmosphere. In other words, in space. They go up into space and they take out the missiles. So I'm guessing the way, the, and I'm not a military expert by any means, um, but they come up very high from Iran and then they come down. And so when they're up there in space, that's where the, and it, it, it's a purple puff. And there are videos of what happened last night. You know, for the Israeli defense systems, last night was like um, a blessing in disguise. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't ever want to go through that again. Nobody wants to be bombed. But it, it 99%, I don't think it could have performed. Well, it could have performed better with 100%. But I don't think anybody ever dreamed that it would perform that well. Now, we the, the main target that Iran was trying to hit, again, the, the missiles went, you know, I saw them from where I'm at. And you, if you, you probably saw the video, I don't live in Jerusalem, I live about an hour away, but many of you probably saw the video, if not, you can go see it online, of all the missiles behind the iron, not the iron dome, but the dome of the rock. Would have been interesting if one of those uh, missiles of the shrapnel took out the al Aska Mosque or the dome of the rock, um, paving the way for the third temple. 
uh, but it did not. Uh, but there were, you could see in the Jerusalem area. And from what I understand is our, our siren system, our early warning system, did not uh, alert people. The, they heard the booms before they heard the siren. So for the folks living in the Jerusalem area, it was per, uh, specifically, particularly terrifying. Um, but uh, again, I could see it from my balcony, not near what you could see if you were in the Jerusalem area. They, they did not par target really the coastal areas. Now, I'm telling you, I looked at the map of where they hit, but I saw uh, things falling down and going up uh, near Ashdod, but they weren't on, you know, so maybe that was sh shrapnel coming down. I don't know. It had a very long way to fall, and they were on fire. It was... It was a surreal moment for me watching these ballistics missiles coming out of the sky. Um, were you scared? No. Um, and that's just a weird thing because I'm not, I'm not a brave person. I'm not some, I've never fought in a war. I've always thought my entire life that that would be the scariest thing ever to actually be in a war. But what, what I realize is that when you are in the midst of it, uh, there is an adrenaline that kicks in that often overcomes fear or the grace of God. Uh, maybe that's what I was feeling, but no, I was not scared. Uh, I, and I'm, you know, I, I am a person of faith. I believe, I trust God. Uh, I did not believe that they were going to have significant impact in Israel. So, um, so the arrow system three takes it about in the atmosphere and then they, they, they fall down and it was over. Uh, it was very, um, you know, like, I don't want to say anticlimactic. I couldn't, again, I'm over here on the coast, so I couldn't see everything that was happening, but it was just so quick. And then it was like, eh, 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 are we, we're done? I can't go to sleep. Is that it? I stayed up for a little bit while. I, I think that was at 1.30 in the morning. Um, at 2.30, I got back. I could not sleep. I mean, I was just so wired. I finally fell asleep at, at 5 a.m., at 5 a.m. So, um just a few more things I uh, want, want to share with you. So, again, obviously in Iran, because they're all about propaganda, they're saying this was a great, tremendous victory. It's got to be a huge embarrassment. Oh, I was telling you that they were going after the primary target was our um, Nivatim Air Base, uh, which is where we keep our F-35 stealth bombers. And that, that is where some of them did get through, but thank God the damage was minimal. No airplanes were, uh, uh, were hit. The runway was not hit. It was a huge fail for the Islamic fundamentalist regime in Iran, uh, although they won't tell you that. They'll tell you it was just uh, uh, amazing. Now, on the other hand, I do not believe that Iran wanted to cause too much human damage. By the way, I did read this morning on the Twitter, uh, but I mean, I've just never, what a cesspool of anti-Semitism. Um, and of course, Twitter knows, you know, that I'm interested in this issue. So they always make sure I see just the most horrible people in the world. Uh, so one guy says this morning, you know, look, Israel targeted innocent civilians, but Iran just targeted uh, military bases. Well, you go look at the map. You go look at the map. It's on there. Of It was all over the country, in the center of the country. And, and you know, sadly, um, you know, Iran's trying to kill Jews. That was their goal, to kill Jews. And they ended up injuring, severely injuring, a Bedouin Arab girl, seven years old. So here they are accusing Israel of intentionally trying to hurt children, women. And they actually, uh, instead of hurting any Jewish people in Israel, uh, and I and I believe I hope she survived. I know she's in the hospital with Jewish doctors working to save her life because we don't want her to die. She's a citizen of the state of Israel. Uh, Twenty percent of Israeli uh, of Israelis are Arabs. Uh, so again, it was a giant fail for them. So now the question becomes: um, Let me just see if there's any more information that I wrote down here that I wanted to share with you. Um, no. So now. The question becomes, what is Israel going to do in return? Uh, President Biden, and we're very great. There's a, a mural that came up overnight in Tel Aviv of President Biden as Captain America. It's very cool. It's not based on reality. If you have seen 
President Biden. He is not physically <laughs> looking like uh, Captain America right now. Um, uh, but people were grateful that America stood with Israel last night. That apparently the Iranians, according to the Iranians, they told the Americans last night that they were going to do it or when they did it. Um, I don't know if that's true or not or if it was just U.S. intelligence, but we got word from America here in Israel that was happening. That was all over the news. And again, I went to bed at 11 not thinking of, about this at all. Um, but then when it was over, President Biden's words to Netanyahu, and they've had a frosty relationship over the past few months. Um, and let me just say something. This is very important to understand. Um, nobody here wants innocent people in Gaza to die. It, it, it's a tragedy. But you, you, And I, I have to keep saying this. You have to understand urban warfare and even the recent history of urban warfare. Go, warfare. go do some research. There's lots of websites out there. And find out about how many casualties, innocent casualties there were when the United States of America dealt with ISIS in Mosul and in, uh, I think it's called Raqqa. Uh, the percentages of innocent people dying were higher when the U.S. had to deal with ISIS in our urban warfare, um, and, and you say, well, you know, you know, why all the bo- why 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 was the U.S. bombing instead of just going in there? Because the U.S. they got to protect their own soldiers, and, and like any any nation, their primary job is to protect their own people first. That, we didn't start this war. We didn't w- want this war. But what has happened is that Hamas unleashed this horrific attack and then they ran and they're hiding behind women and children. So we go into a hospital, it was, I guess, two weeks ago and there's 600 terrorists in the hospital along with sick people. That's horrible. That is not legitimate warfare. And so, but that's what terrorists do. And so when you fight like that, a lot of innocent people die. That, so our two choices, um, uh, America's two choices with ISIS was don't do anything and let ISIS grow and just take over the whole Middle East, or you crush them and unfortunately innocent people die. And again, it, when America took out ISIS, ISIS for the most part, when I when they took them out for the most part, a lot of innocent people died. A higher percentage of people died in that than are dying in Gaza. And if you if if you have not noticed, the numbers have slowed dramatically because much of the operations are over. No, nobody's just going around killing innocent people uh, for for the the sake of killing. No, it's going after Hamas. And unfortunately, they have no conscience. They don't care. They will hide behind grandmothers and children in hospitals, in school. It does not bother them that innocent people die. It doesn't bother. It bothers us more than it bothers them. And so our choice in Israel, I know a lot of folks around the world don't understand this, but we have two choices. We can let another October the 7th happen. And they have said, Hamas has said, we want to do it again and again and again. That's what they're threatening us with. How long should we wait? 20 years we waited until they went too far. And um, so our choice is either to deal with them or to... Just wait for the next October. You know what? It's let's not. We don't want anybody to get hurt. So we'll just sacrifice our own people. Who would do that? What what country are you from? I'm talking to you. What country are you from? Would your country accept that? Let me just ask you that. Would your country accept that on your border is a, another more or less country, small country, with a run by a terrorist organization that just killed 1,200 of your people, raped women? Uh, took 246 hostages. What country would not defend itself? And unfortunately, when it's urban warfare, it's very tragic. It's horrible. It's heartbreaking. But that's what they're choosing. Okay. So Biden says to BB last night, or this morning, he said, take the win. And I quote, I think it was, take the win. You know, you took out 297 out of 300, you know, drones and missiles. Just, let's just end it. Iran, Iran immediately released, sent a message to the UN and says, this concludes our, um, uh, our response. We now consider the matter over. It's like, no, no, you, you, you sent 
300 missiles. You tried, in drones, you tried to kill a lot of Jewish people. You know, we're not going to apologize that we got a really good defense system and that we got help from other folks. You, if we didn't, think about how many people would have died last night. Thousands of people would have died last night. And so, um, and, and this was in response to killing seven military officers that were planning attacks against Israel. So, um, so Israel is like, no, you know, we, we appreciate the help of the United States, but we, we probably have to respond. And from what I understand, Biden's added, uh, words were, well, then you're going to do it alone. We're not going to do it with you. Um, and uh, we'll have to see what happens with that. But you, again, if I, if I could share anything with President Biden, it would be that you, you, the Middle East is not America. It's not Canada. It is not uh, the Western Hemisphere. It's not Europe. It, it, they play different down here. It's the wild, wild East, if you will. And when you, when you don't respond, like Iran right now, if we don't respond, they won't go, you know what? Look at those Israelis. Responsible. They did something. We did something. You know, maybe they're not so bad. At, no, they're not going to do that. They're going to say, look at those weak Israelis. Let's attack them again. Let's attack through Hezbollah. And by the way, it's not like we're not still fighting Iran. You know, they, maybe they stopped bombing us from their own country, which was unprecedented, by the way. It's, it never happened before. But we've still got Hezbollah in the north. We've still got Gaza, uh, um, Hamas in the south. And the Houthis are, are still sending missiles. So it's not like they're done. We're, we're still here in Israel getting attacked by people who are funded by Iran. So, I mean, maybe if they stopped all that, you know, we, we, we could have a conversation. But they're still attacking us. They're just not doing it from Iran. So, um, uh, it looks like we'll have to go it alone. And th there will be a response probably because, again, when we left, and I'm going to finish up here in just the next minute or two. When we left Gaza in 2005, we unilaterally left Gaza just Came out, took our people, 10,000 Jews that were living there, took the military, we just left. Gave them greenhouses and farms, they destroyed them. They did not say thank you. They did not say, Ew, that, that, that is just great that the Israelis had left. They returned our kindness with tens of hundreds of thousands of rockets over the last 20 years. That, that's how they responded. Why? Because they saw our unilaterally leaving without any agreement as retreat weakness they celebrated as if it was their victory not us simply doing what was in our best interest which is we don't want to be in gaza with our military anymore it's not worth it to us uh and so in this part of the world in the islamic fanatics mind if you don't punch back it is a sign of weakness so unfortunately israel is probably going to have to attack and uh, uh, respond and hopefully take out their uh, their uh, nuclear growing nuclear capabilities. They still don't have a bomb, but those ballistic missiles in another I don't know six months a year could have a nuclear bomb on them. So that is where we're at, my friends. So I wanted to give you a little bit of update. I appreciate you guys um, praying for us. Uh, I know I'm just looking here at some of the comments. Um, I know that um, many of you, many of you, uh, and, and particularly today is Sunday and your, your congregation are praying for Israel. We, keep, keep it, keep it up, keep it up, keep doing it. We need your prayers. We're, we're being attacked on several fronts from Lebanon, from Syria, from Iraq. What do you mean Iraq? Iraq's involved in this? Iraq uh, has Iranian militant groups in their country that they can't deal with and, and or maybe they're not willing to deal with. Yes. So we're being attacked from Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, uh, Yemen, Gaza, and now Iran. And, and the world is against us. On, on, tomorrow is the 15th. Tomorrow is supposedly a worldwide day for the anarchists, the left wing. This is the, the, the craziest part of the whole thing. And, and I'm, I got my haircut today, and my, my barber is just telling me, like, are these left-wing people nuts? 
Do they're, they're siding with jihadists? Did they not understand that the jihadists will kill them? And I, I, I was sent this website the other day, and it, tomorrow is, I don't know how successful it will be, maybe it'll be very successful, but it's supposed to be a global day to shut down uh, uh, you know, highways and airports and cities all over the world because of what Israel did in 1948. Do you understand? They're, 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 just to be clear, these anarchists that are going to stage protests all over the world tomorrow, it's not because of what we did in Gaza. It's because we became a nation. Now, if I could sit down with any of these not very educated people, I, I could explain to them the history if they had an open mind, and they would realize that they, they, they're nuts. That they're not nuts. They're, again, they're not, they're not clinically nuts. They're not educated. They don't know the history here. Again, they, they probably don't care that 1948 came three years after 1945 when the Holocaust ended, when the world realized with us that we would never survive as a people without coming, going back to our own country. We came back here. We purchased land back going back to the late 1800s. Didn't steal land. We purchased land. We asked our neighbors, let's live in peace together. They said, no, we're going to have war. We're going to destroy you before you even experience your first birthday as a nation. And so I got to go, <laughs> you know, I could, I could go on all night. You know, you guys know me if you follow me, I don't. Um, so, I mean, I, I know the history here and they don't, it's, it's sad. And they feed, they get so triggered because they feed and sign. They watch some, some guy on YouTube or on Twitter. I mean, I see these angry Brits, young guys in their twenties and they're super articulate, but they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, they do not know history, but they, they, they're passionate as if they do. Like, they're articulate as if they actually know the history, and they don't. So, all right, my friends, God bless you. Thank you so much for praying for us. I'm going to go now, and um, it's nighttime here. I'm going to go hang out with the, uh, with the jackals. They're getting ready for round two. So I hope you could hear them. Um, I've taped them before, and so maybe next time I'll, I'll play it for you if you, if you could, uh, couldn't hear them. Love you guys. Thank you. Keep praying for us. Shalom.